Hi, welcome to your next challenge entitled Count Syllables. You are to create a function that counts the number of syllables a word has. Each syllable is separated with a dash. Let's check below to make sure we understand. You see with the input buffet, um, there's one hyphen there. You got text on each side of it, so you got two syllables. Um, they're telling you they're basically going to format it for you, break the syllables apart, and they'll be separated by this dash character. So obviously three there, four there, count up six there. All right, pretty clear. Let's go to the coding portion, now that we understand. Okay, so you should pause and try this yourself. I will now go into some solutions. I found a handy method with the string class that's called split and you can provide it a delimiter. The delimiter is a special um, character or a collection of characters that we're going to look for. In this case, here's my overload down here. Um, let's see. Yeah. So see how you could pass many in. So like if you wanted to cover lots of different kinds of punctuation, that sort of thing. We don't need to do that in our example. I'm going to provide a single character to mine. There was something associated with this overload I wanted to show you. OK. It basically said that even though um, it takes a ch uh, char array as input, you can pass an individual char and the compiler will sort of interpret that to be a, an array with a single element that's contained somewhere in this document. Um, feel free to read more about that. String split is where I was, and then system namespace. So I'm going to do one like that. I'm going to say word, which is my string. I know that strings have a method called split I can use. And I have to pass a character array, or I'm also allowed to pass a single character. I used single quotes since we're doing characters. Remember, if I use double quotes, I would denote that this is a string. Those are different things. So, word split. Word split returns me a string array. Let's see if we, it'll show us that. Yeah, see how it returns a string array? So, we're going to, with this statement so far, I'm going to get back an array of strings. Uh, split apart by the delimiter, and when that happens with the split, you can imagine there are a bunch of separate entr en entries, and the character, the delimiter itself is not included. It's thrown out. It's used as sort of the boundary between tokens, as they're often referred to. So since we have this collection, I can call length. It's going to be all those little three-letter or single-letter, all of these sort of chunks right here. I'm going to have an array of those. That would be index 0, that'd be index 1, that'd be index 2. And you know by now with arrays, they have a length property. They'll tell you how many. So this is going to give me the number of symbols. Or, I'm sorry, syllables. So check that. I think this is OK. Cool. Yeah, nice short one-liner there to get it. Um, you, you could do the, the for loop, go through that way, and sort of skip over um, the dash characters and increment account that way. I'm not going to do that. There was another way I was going to show you. So another way of looking at the problem in terms of a solution was that if you notice, the number of syllables is essentially one more than the number of delimiters or, or dashes. So if there's one dash, you know, it separates two syllables. Uh, this one has two dashes and three syllables. This one has three dashes and four syllables, etc. So if I count the number of dashes, I can simply add one to get the syllables, the number of syllables, assuming the input is provided correctly. And we didn't do any kind of error checking. But I think it's useful to talk about, you know, what kind of things could go wrong. What would happen if there was a leading dash here. That would throw out the solution I'm about to implement, you know, so it really 
matters that the input is well formed for uh, the solution I'm talking about to work. So yeah, you could add your own protection in for that. I'm going to overlook that for this problem and we're going to look at another way of doing it. I thought it was good to show because it was a nice sort of um, refresher of the Lambda talk we had recently. So I wanted to have you guys have a go at that and see if you could remember it, see if you could implement one on your own. That would be really cool at this level if you can do that. So um, return word. We had that count. Do you remember we used count for counting Booleans? So I'm just going to use that same method again. You can refer back to that video if you'd like for um, information about lambdas and whatnot. So I'm going to take the count. Remember I said however many dashes there are, you just simply add one to get the number of syllables. Now the question is, we know our lambda expression goes in here. So what do you put in here? It needs that function. Um, so think about it. Pause it if you'd like. That'd be good and try and figure that out. Remember, I'll go into it. You can name your um, variable whatever you want. The, the word is an array of characters, so each variable that I get is going to be a character. So I'm just going to call it CH because I'm looking at as this thing goes, as it iterates over this collection of characters, each element that I examine one in turn will be a character. So I'm just going to call it CH, short for character. And then when I have that character, what do I want to do with it, right? This is my input parameter. We learned that on the left side of this arrow is your input parameters. So I know that's a char, char ch. It's just like if we had a method where we defined a parameter this way, char ch, but we don't have to do that here. So we know we got a char, and we're going to say if that char is equal to dash, right? Then we know we have, well, there's a dash then, and we're going to count it. We're not going to increment the count otherwise, only if the character equals a dash. So this bit should give us an integer value of the number of dashes in the word. And then, like I said, we're going to add one to get the number of syllables. So um, I think we added, we used link last time for that count. And yeah, hopefully you came up with something like this. And it doesn't matter what you name your variable, but you have to refer to it by the same name here. Let's see if this is right. Cool. Yeah, so that's another way of doing it. And I wanted to give you guys a chance to try and do a lambda. So extra credit points if you got that. Hit me up with questions and comments as usual. And thanks for watching.